Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. In the last lecture, we saw how linear equations can be used to solve real-world problems involving quantities such as ages and dimensions. In this lecture, we will see how to use linear equations to solve problems involving time, distance, and speed. Most of us are familiar with the concept of speed. We know that when we travel faster, we get to where we are going in less time. Or we travel a larger distance in the same amount of time. Automobiles come equipped with speed measuring devices called speedometers, which indicate speed in miles or kilometers per hour. The indicated speed tells us how many miles or kilometers we would travel in a single hour, assuming we traveled at a constant speed for the entire hour. Let's say that we are traveling at a constant speed of 50 kilometers per hour. We can visually represent this motion by graphing our distance from the starting point versus the elapsed time. If we graph time on the horizontal axis, and distance on the vertical axis, we see that our distance increases at a constant rate. Distance is a linear function of time as long as our speed is constant. Our speed determines the slope of the graph. The greater the speed, the greater the slope. Just as slope is defined as the change in the vertical coordinate over the change in the horizontal coordinate, Speed is defined as the change in distance over the change in time. If the change in distance and time are measured starting from the beginning of the trip, then our speed is simply the distance divided by the time measured at any point along the trip, assuming, of course, that our speed is constant. For instance, if we travel a distance of 50 kilometers in one hour, then our speed is 50 kilometers per hour. If we travel 100 kilometers in two hours, the calculated speed will still be 50 kilometers per hour. Likewise, at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour, we will travel 25 kilometers in one half hour. Knowing this relationship between speed, distance, and time, we can calculate any of these three quantities if we know the values of the other two. For example, by multiplying both sides of this equation by time, we see that speed times time equals distance. For example, if we go 50 kilometers per hour for two hours, we will travel a distance of 100 kilometers. This formula is easy to remember and very useful for solving problems involving speed, time, and distance. As an example, let's say that we are on a train 100 kilometers west of St. Louis, traveling east at 60 kilometers per hour. How long will it take us to travel 290 kilometers east of St. Louis? We know from our formula that speed times time equals distance. Since we know the speed and total distance, we should have enough information to calculate the total travel time. Let's let the variable t represent the total time of the trip. We know that the train travels a distance of 100 kilometers plus 290 kilometers, or a total of 390 kilometers and that the speed of the train is 60 kilometers per hour. Since we are solving this equation for t, we want to rearrange the equation so that t is alone on the left side. To do this, we divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of t, 60. We can then cancel the factors of 60 in the numerator and denominator of the fraction on the left leaving the equation t equals 390 divided by 60, or 6.5. So the total time required for the train trip is six and one half hours. 
Now let's try a problem which involves two vehicles moving at different speeds. A car and a bus are each traveling at constant speeds in opposite directions on a highway. Three hours after they pass each other, they are 360 miles apart. If the car is traveling 10 miles per hour faster than the bus, how fast is each vehicle traveling? If we let the variable s represent the speed of the bus, we can represent the speed of the car as s plus 10, since the car's speed is 10 miles per hour faster than the bus. We know that the time that each vehicle has traveled since they passed each other is 3 hours. Knowing that speed times time equals distance, we can now write the distance traveled for each vehicle. In 3 hours, the bus has traveled 3s miles. And the car has traveled 3 times s plus 10 miles. The sum of these distances must equal the distance between the two vehicles, or 360 miles. We now have an equation which can be solved for the unknown variable s. We start by using the distributive property to distribute the 3 to the two terms inside the parentheses. Completing the arithmetic, 3 times 10 is 30. And combining the two terms containing the variable s, 3s plus 3s is 6s. Since we would like an equation with s alone on the left side, we subtract 30 from both sides of the equation. This allows us to cancel the positive and negative 30 on the left. Completing the arithmetic on the right, we subtract 30 from 360 to get 330. Finally, dividing both sides by 6 allows us to cancel the 6 in the numerator and denominator of the fraction on the left, leaving the equation s equals 330 divided by 6, or s equals 55. Since s represents the speed of the bus, the bus's speed is 55 miles per hour, and the speed of the car is 55 plus 10, or 65 miles per hour. Having found the speeds for the two vehicles, we can check these results by multiplying the travel time times speed for each vehicle to calculate the distance traveled, and then confirming that the sum of the distances is 360 miles. The distance traveled by the bus is 3 times 55, or 165 miles. And the distance traveled by the car is 3 times 65, or 195 miles. Since the sum of these two distances is indeed equal to 360 miles, we know that our calculations were correct. For our last example, let's solve a problem involving a vehicle traveling at different speeds at different times during the same trip. Mr. Squidgeopolis has developed a car which can transform into a high-speed flying machine. He decides to take his new vehicle on a test drive from Orlando to San Francisco. He starts by driving on the highway maintaining a constant speed of 70 miles per hour. After some time, he switches into flight mode. Quickly reaching a cruising speed of just over Mach 1, 770 miles per hour. Upon reaching San Francisco, 2,450 miles from his starting point, he checks his watch and sees that it has been five hours since he started. However, he forgot to record the time that he switched into flight mode, so he does not know how long he was driving at 70 miles per hour and how long he was flying at 770 miles per hour. Fortunately, using algebra, 
it is possible to calculate how long he has traveled at each speed. Let's let T represent the amount of time traveling at 70 miles per hour. Since the total travel time was 5 hours, the amount of time traveling at 770 miles per hour is 5 minus T. Since distance is equal to speed times time, the distance traveled during the first leg of the trip is 70 times T miles. Likewise, the distance traveled during the second leg is 770 times 5 minus T miles. The sum of these two distances must equal the total distance traveled, or 2,450 miles. We now have an equation which can be solved for the unknown variable t. We start by using the distributive property to distribute 770 to the two terms inside the parentheses. Completing the arithmetic, 770 times 5 is 3,850. And combining the two terms containing the variable t, 70t minus 770t is negative 700t. Since we want an equation with t alone on the left side, we subtract 3,850 from both sides of the equation. This allows us to cancel the positive and negative 3,850 on the left. Completing the arithmetic on the right, 2,450 minus 3,850 is negative 1,400. Next, we divide both sides by negative 700, which allows us to cancel the negative 700 in the numerator and denominator of the fraction on the left. We then simplify the fraction on the right, dividing negative 1400 by negative 700, giving us the equation t equals 2. Since t represents the amount of time traveling at 70 miles per hour, we know that the first leg of the trip took 2 hours. Likewise, the second leg took 5 minus 2, or 3 hours. Having found the times for the two legs, we can check these results by multiplying the speed times travel time for each leg of the trip to calculate the distances traveled, and then confirming that the sum of these distances is 2,450 miles. The distance traveled during the first leg is 70 times 2, or 140 miles. And the distance traveled during the second leg is 770 times 3, or 2,310 miles. Since the sum of these distances equals 2,450 miles, we know that our calculations are correct. These three examples illustrate how to create linear equations to solve problems involving constant speeds. In each example, we use the relationship between speed, time, and distance which we saw at the beginning of the lecture. The first example involved a single vehicle moving at a constant speed. The total time traveled was unknown, so we represented that value by the variable t. We then wrote an expression for the distance traveled as speed times time. We could then equate this expression to the total distance, producing an equation containing a single variable t. The equation was then solved to find the value of t. The second example involved two vehicles traveling at constant speeds. We knew the time traveled by each vehicle, but we did not know their speeds. However, we knew the two speeds were related, since one speed was 10 miles per hour greater than the other, so we could use a single variable to create expressions for both speeds. We then wrote expressions for the distances traveled by each vehicle as time, time speed. 
we could then equate the sum of these distances to the known value for the total distance. This produced an equation with a single variable, which could then be solved to find the value of that variable. The values of both expressions for speed could then be calculated. The third example involved a single vehicle traveling at two constant speeds during two different time periods. The speeds for the two time periods were known, but the length of time for each period was not known. However, we knew that the two times were related since their sum was five hours, so we could use a single variable to create expressions for both times. We then wrote expressions for the distances traveled during each period as speed times time. The sum of these distances could then be equated to the known value for the total distance. Since the equation contained a single variable, we could solve it for that variable and then evaluate the values for both expressions for time. In this lecture, we have seen how linear equations can be used to solve real-world problems involving speed, time, and distance. In the next lecture, we will see how to use linear equations to solve problems which involve percentages.